What's good, y'all? Welcome to an episode of Buzz Boys. Today, we got the final episode of the Draft Grade series. Last but not least, Amari Bailey. Um, somebody who I was really happy to get in the draft. Somebody who, to me, household name. Um, I wanted to draft somebody that I knew who they were. And, I mean, known who Amari Bailey was for years now. If you're not familiar with them, I don't know where you've been. Been living under a rock. Um, this kid, he was a huge star at Sierra Canyon, um, playing with LeBron's son, Bronny. Um, so he was constantly just in the media. I mean, he was good. He was the best player on the team. He was a walking highlight. Um, Drake even started dating his mom. So, you know, that got even more attraction because Drake's dating his mom. Drake's, Drake's come to all the games. So it just, you know, it just blew him and that team up even more. But, um, this past year... Freshman year at UCLA, had a pretty good season. Um, and there's a lot of things to like about him, especially at 41 in the draft. Because um, I honestly thought he would be late first round or picked somewhere in the 30s. So for us to get him at 41, pretty happy with that. Because um, like I said, man, there's a lot to like. Um, first things first, he is a good defender on ball. Um even off the ball, but on ball, he's good at sticking to his man, sliding his feet, just staying with constant pressure. Um, he's good at forcing just tough shots for for the opponent. And that's something that I talked about in, I believe, the Nick Smith video. And if you haven't watched that, go watch that. Um, I'm going to make a um, a playlist for all the draft grade videos so you can just go go to the playlist and watch it and I'll put that at the end of this video so you can click on it and if you want to whatever but anyways something I talked about then was that Mitch Kupchak I think he definitely targeted two-way players in this draft um outside of James Najee right now he's primarily a defender and just really a dunk threat but with Brandon Miller two-way Nick Smith two-way Amari Bailey two-way so I think that's something that he definitely is focused on um, which I think is, is good because what this team needs, this team needs consistent scoring, but most importantly, it needs defense. Okay. We need to stop people. That's what we need. The Hornets can get hot, make shots and, you know, put up 115, 120. But when the other team has 130, it doesn't fucking matter. So that's, that's really what I feel like Mitch Kupchak was targeting in this draft was to get as many two way players as possible because, at worst, they become a 3 and D player, um, 3 and D role player at worst, basically. So, like I said, Amari Bailey, very good defender, can move his feet. Um, he, he's a very good defender. But another thing, he is a great passer. Well, I ain't going to say great. I'll say he's a good passer. He's a good passer, um, especially in the pick and roll. He knows how to play, which is why I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he's the point guard in summer league. Um, I really don't see a point guard on our summer league roster. So to me, I feel like it's going to be Nick Smith or Amari Bailey. Could possibly be James Booknight. It could be either one of those three. But out of those three, I'd probably say Bailey is probably the best passer. Um, so I am going to be interested to see who plays point guard in summer league. And that was the reason that we sucked last year in summer league because we really didn't have a point guard on the roster. So we'll see. But he is a good passer, um, a good all around player. And he just knows how to operate the pick and roll with good efficiency, which is why I think, you know, if he can't make it on the floor as a as a pure scorer, he possibly could. Fill the gap at backup point guard if we do let Dennis Smith Jr. go. One of Dennis Smith Jr.'s things, he was good at defense, but he wasn't a good, efficient scorer. So Amari Bailey could be somebody who could possibly get into that role. You never know. Uh, but I do expect him to spend a lot of time in Greensboro. But knowing how to operate the pick and roll is a very important skill as a guard in the NBA. It doesn't matter if you're playing the one or the two. You're going to be in situations where... You just have to be able to operate the pick and roll. That's just basic basketball. Um, and he's fairly good at it. And another thing, man, he's just a mid-range sniper. He's a mid-range sniper, bro. Um, so with that, he can come out of the pick, um, come out the pick and roll and get right into his pull-up jump shot. Um, 
like around that top of the key area. He likes that right there on the elbows of the free throw line as well. But his midi is something that, like I talked about with Nick Smith, um, it's a lost art. So getting guys that can be three level scores is is important. Um, and yeah, he's a strong finisher out the out of the pick and roll. He can score, but ultimately he doesn't have to be pick and roll. He just has a good pull up mid range jump shot, and that's something that defenses will give you in the NBA nowadays. It's really stop the three. If the guy's not a good shooter, dare him to shoot the three, and that's really it. So you know, if you can get to your mid range jumper in the NBA, it will be there for you. But ultimately, you do have to be able to shoot threes as well, which is something that he is good at. Um, he shot 42% on, on catch and shoot threes. And honestly, his just field goal percentage all around was great. Um, he was a 50% scorer from the field. Can't really beat that as a guard. Um, just for comparison, Nick Smith, 37% field goal on the year. Um Brandon Miller, 43% on the year from the field. So being a 50% score from the field is impressive, but, you know, even more impressive, 39% um, on three-pointers and a 42% on catch-and-shoot threes. So you're getting somebody who is a very efficient scorer, um, good passer. He's somebody who I can see his efficiency getting him onto the floor as well as his defensive tenacity. Um yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. I also like Bryce McGowns. Um, now, I know some people, you know, they were going hard on the Nick Smith um, video saying that, you know, Book Knight's here to stay. So, hey, to me, Bryce McGowns is already better than Book Knight. Um, and Amari Bailey and Nick Smith, you know, possibly being right there doing the team. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out for Book. But like I said, I do expect Bailey to be in Greensboro for probably most of this year anyway. So, it is what it is, but he definitely does have the shooting capability that you need out of a role player. Um, you know, just be 3 and D, something that really was got Cody Martin, you know, so much love from this coaching staff. Um, play defense and can knock down a three when you're open. That's all we need you to do, and that's something that he does excel at is that catch and shoot three. Um now, I think that is all for the pros, and I am trying to keep this video pretty short. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the cons. Um, one of the cons is that he can be turnover prone. Um, actually, hold on. I got another pro. I got another pro. I'm sorry. He He's good at keeping plays alive with his, with his dribble, um, extending plays, which takes some creativity on the ball. And he can score off of that, which is something that you want off of a guard. You know, at in the day when stuff breaks down, can you make something out of nothing? And he is good at that. Um, but also, that can be a con. And it's that trying to make something out of nothing, sometimes there really is nothing. Um, that there's nothing. It will lead to a turnover. You can't force stuff. And that's something that he can do. Um just over dribbling, trying to trying to make something happen that just simply is not there and it leads to turnovers. Um he led the team in turnovers. He led the team in turnovers and he has some games where he had seven turnovers. I counted more than one, but he had seven turnovers, five turnovers. So he can be somebody who can be turnover prone, but also it's just young player shit. At the end of the day, you're a freshman coming into a team like UCLA already had Tyreek Campbell, um, you know, you, you're going to make mistakes. But, yeah, just that, the negative assist turnover ratio, even though I think he is a pretty a pretty good passer for his position, he does have a negative assist turnover ratio. Um, and another thing, even though, like I said, he shot 42% on catch and shoot threes, 39% on the year. He was only four for nine on pull-up threes, which means he's hesitant to shoot off the pull-up three. He has no problem with the pull-up mid-range, but he hesitates to pull up from three. He's mainly like a catch and shoot, which I mean can be good for getting on the court as a possible off the ball score. If he doesn't end up out there with the Lamelo or something like that, you know, he's somebody who can catch and shoot. But on the ball 
as a primary ball handler, he does, I'm not going to say lack the skill because even going four for nine is still a good percentage. It's still almost 50%. But the whole year, you only took nine pull-up threes. It shows that you're not confident in that shot, even though you can make it. Um, and another thing, um, his shot mechanics, he can shoot and shoot and it doesn't look the same. Um, so that's just all about mechanics, how your shot is built, um, just being consistent with that shot. And really is kind of something that is rare to see at somebody like Amari's stage of his career. Cause like you've been playing basketball for a long time. Your jump shot should be kind of set to muscle memory by now. You've been playing basketball probably your whole life. Um, but it's like, if it goes in, it's just kind of like, I don't know, maybe it can go unaddressed if, if you're making it. So there is that. Um, and it's just like, not only up top, but like with his legs, he can sometimes just have dead legs, which ends up with the ball being short, which is all mechanics and something that, you know, getting with an NBA shooting coach could be fixed in a summer. And at the end of the day, these numbers show that, not too much needs to be fixed. At the end of the day, the ball is going in the basket when he shoots. Like, that's honestly what jumps off the paper to me when I look at anything from him. I see 50% field goal percentage, 39%. You know, that's somebody who, when you're dealing with the NBA, 50-40-90 club. That's what you want to be in. That's that's the prestige, you know, 50-40-90. Well, he already has the 50 and 40 down pat, but... This goes into another con, his free throw shooting. He did only shoot 70%, really like 69, 70% from the free throw line this year. As a guard, that's the number that needs to be way higher. I said the same thing about Nick Smith. He's only at 74% free throw percentage. So that's something that needs to be way higher. 70% from the line as, as a guard, that's not good enough um, at all. So that's something that definitely has to improve so you can get to that 50, 40, 90 club. Because these, these stats from the field are, are impressive. But from the free throw line, he does struggle. 70%, you know, that's big man percentage. That that needs to be picked up for sure. Um, and last but not least, he does struggle with screens. Um, he goes around. Like, he takes the long route to, to avoid the screen. Or he can get hung up on them. And, um, you know... At the end of games when guards are pushing the ball up the floor, those screens you just don't see, he runs right into those. And that's something in the NBA centers, you know, they know they got young guards. They're finna pick them off, bro. So it's that. Honestly, I'm really happy about this pick because a lot of these cons that I've said, they're not that bad. You know, one of his cons, he was only four for nine from pull-up threes, that's, like, fuck, still fucking 50%. Like, that's good, and, you know, but these are all things that are still problems, are still cons, but I think Amari um, getting into an NBA system in Greensboro, um, getting just around NBA coaches, stuff like that, I think he can clean up all his errors and, you know, maybe – after the all-star break, you know, depending on what moves we make or, you know, next year could be getting minutes on this team because as a player, he's pretty smart and pretty efficient as far as scoring, um, just cleaning up the turnovers and, you know, getting better with screens, free throw shooting, um, shot mechanics not like his shot is broken it goes in so like i said this is all things that i feel like with experience can all get better um as far as my grade i do give him a b plus i do give it a b plus i, I do like the pick i'm teetering on a minus but i gave um miller and smith a minus i don't want to give everybody a minus um shit I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about an A minus because I do feel like we got value, but ultimately, I'm thinking we'll stick with B plus. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
A part of me wants to say A minus. Fuck it, I'm gonna say A minus, bro. I'm gonna be optimistic. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say A minus. At the end of the day, he is 19 years old, and you know he has good problems. You know that's 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 why I'm gonna go ahead and say A minus, just because the value we got him at 41. If the kid doesn't work out, who's gonna cry about a second round pick not working out? Um, we didn't trade up to get him. This was literally our last pick at 41. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it an A- minus just because where we got him at and what his cons are, they're not bad. Easily approval, approval bun. And, I mean, his shooting numbers are good. 42% on catch and shoot. 39% on the year. 50% from the field on the year. How can you not like these numbers? Um, and on top of that, he is a good defender. So, you know, I'm going to go A minus. I'm going to go A minus. I definitely thought heavily about the B plus, but I'm going to go with A minus. And um, that's going to wrap this up for this draft grade series. And like I said, if you haven't went and watched the others, go watch them. I graded all four of our picks. And I did realize I did just spoil some <laughs> what I was just talking. But fuck it, it is what it is. Still, go and watch them if you haven't. Um, it wasn't just about the grade. It's about, you know, looking at the pros and the cons of each player and, you know, what makes them them. And, you know, every player has flaws, but every player was an NBA draft pick for a reason. So everybody is good. But at the same time, you know, everybody has something that they have to worry about. It is what it is. It's the fact of being a teenager going into a grown man's league. You're not going to be perfect. Um, all these players are... 18, 19 years old. Actually, except for Brandon Smith might be, I said Brandon Smith. Brandon Miller might be 20. I think Brandon Miller might be 20. But everybody else is 18, 19. And don't get me wrong, um, Brandon Miller could possibly be 19. But anyway, all these players I think can be good. I think they can grow into our system. And I mean, the opportunity is there for them. If Kelly Oubre walks this year, which I think he will, because our money has to go to Miles and PJ. And also keep your eyes out for a free agency episode because free agency is getting very close to starting. So keep your eyes out for that. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't hit the notification bell, hit that. But like I said, with Oubre probably being gone, Dennis Smith Jr., who knows? Um, Cody Martin, I don't know. Could be gone. Didn't play at all last year. Could be viewed as expendable considering how many, like I said, two-way players that we just drafted. Um, Terry Rozier, who knows? Book Knight, who knows? So there's a chance that any of these young guards, McGowan's, Nick Smith, Amari Bailey, could be a part of the future and be a part of the rotation in these coming years pretty easily because nothing's set in stone with this team really except for a few players. So, yeah, anything's possible. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. Like, comment, subscribe. And once again, I appreciate y'all for the love for the subscribers. We're almost at like 550 subscribers. Just the other day, I was thanking y'all for getting me to 500. So the page is growing very fast. Um, And in these next few weeks, I hope it continues to do so because I have plenty of content dropping. We got free agency. We got summer league. You know, we got content to make. So I'm happy and I hope that y'all support me. Anyways, until then, peace.